Can something be two things at once? This, this is a washing machine. Well, actually it's a washer dryer. But the point is, it can be used for washing as well as for drying, meaning it is two things at once. And just like this washing machine, light is also two things at once, a wave and a particle. The idea of wave-particle duality first came about when Thomas Young noticed that there were some aspects that weren't explained if light was considered to be a particle. Previously, Isaac Newton stated that light was a particle due to the rectilinear propagation of light. So, when three screens were lined up with a single pinhole in each of them, light from a candle placed behind them was only visible when the three holes were aligned. This can be explained by the known behaviour of a particle at that point in time. Thomas Young then suggested that this issue wasn't so straightforward. He used the double slit experiment to show how light can be diffracted through two vertical slits and create an interference pattern on a screen behind the slits. This evidence suggested that light had strong characteristics of a wave that could not be explained if light was only thought of as a particle. Talking about the wave-particle duality of light, there are two experiments which show that light can be a wave as well as a particle. The first one being the Young's double slit experiment that I've drawn here, which is basically when light passes through two slits, they interfere and cause a diffraction pattern that is seen on this screen, which is both bright and dark fringes. Diffraction and interference are both properties of waves, so if light has these properties, then light must be a wave, right? Well, actually, there is another experiment called the photoelectric effect that suggests that light is actually a particle. The photoelectric effect is the emission of electrons when electromagnetic radiation, such as visible light, is irradiated on a metal surface. So if light was in fact a wave, what should happen is when light is shone on this surface, all the electrons will gain energy slowly until it has enough kinetic energy to leave the metal surface. But what is actually observed is, with certain frequencies of light, there is no photoelectric effect. And even if you increase the intensity, nothing happens. So why is this? Einstein suggested that light comes in discrete packets of energy called photons, and the energy of each photon is equal to this equation, hf, h being Planck's constant and f being the frequency. And then he came to the conclusion that for the electron to have enough kinetic energy to leave the metal surface, the frequency of the, of the light being shone needs to be higher than something called a work function which is circled right this and if the energy of the photon is higher than the work function then then the electron can leave the metal surface now this suggested that light is in fact a particle so which experiment is right the answer is both of them are right and this is what is referred to as wave particle duality so why do we even care if matter is both a wave and a particle well, wave-particle duality is responsible for the phenomenon of quantum tunneling. Quantum tunneling is the ability for a particle to suddenly appear on the other side of a barrier. How is that possible? Well, let's take an electron. Now, if it was just a particle, there was no way it would be able to cross this barrier, no matter how hard it tried or pushed. But because the electron is also a wave or a wave function, things get a little bit more interesting. So, waves off of a boundary reflect, but they also have a lesser known property, which is called evanescence. Essentially, that means it disappears quickly, and this can be modelled by an exponential negative graph. So, essentially, the same thing happens with the electron and the boundary. The wave does reflect, but some part of it, the evanescent part, actually decays into the barrier and emerges on the other side. Since the wave function gives the probability that we'll find the electron at a certain position, we can find the electron on the other side. So how interesting is that? Quantum tunneling is a phenomenon that is responsible for fusion in the sun, DNA mutations, and it's a way we can see the atomic world. Another useful application of the wave-particle duality is solar power, which is a form of renewable energy. 
Solar panels are essentially an application of the photoelectric effect. This effect was crucial in the study of the wave-particle duality. Initially, photons go through a photovoltaic cell which transfers their energy to lose electrons. These cells directly convert light to electric power. These electrons then get knocked off of their orbit in a silicon atom. These electrons then find the path of least resistance towards an empty hole in another atom, and we can make them travel through a circuit. As electrons leave a solar cell as electric current, they pass through a wire conduit and into an inverter. This device transforms direct current into an alternating current that can provide power for various facilities. We hope this video was useful. Thank you for watching.